Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the velocity of the molecules in a gas. For example, the velocity of the molecules in the air. And what we're going to do here is figure out the what we call the root mean square velocity of an oxygen molecule in the air at room temperature, let's say 25 degrees Celsius. But before we solve that problem, let's take a look and see what a velocity distribution curve looks like. This is called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution graph or distribution function which means it indicates how many molecules travel at a particular speed in a gas and that curve will look the same regardless of the gas, regardless of the temperature. It might look a little bit more to the left, to the right, higher, lower, that kind of thing, but the shape of it will be pretty well the same. And notice there's a peak right here at the very top and that, that is where the greatest fraction of all the molecules in a gas will be traveling at this particular speed. So on the horizontal axis we have velocity and on the vertical axis we have number of molecules. So the higher the curve the greater the number of molecules that will be traveling at that particular speed. So you can see that when we get to the very top that means the greatest fraction of molecules will be traveling at that speed and that's called the most probable velocity and the equation for that is the square root of 2 kT over m. k of course being the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number to get the gas constant for a single molecule instead of a mole of molecules. Then we have the average speed. If we take all the speeds, we sum them all up, divide by the number of molecules, we get the average speed of a molecule and that can be calculated to be 8 over 3 kT over m. And then finally the root mean square velocity. That is 3 kT over m and that falls a little bit further to the right as well. But that is the, what we would call the effective velocity of the molecules in the air because remember that the kinetic energy of a molecule depends on the velocity squared so that means that molecules that are way out there with much higher velocities are much greater contributors to the kinetic energy of the gas because they move much faster and the velocity counts very high, it's v squared. And so we need to calculate the root mean square velocity to get the effective velocity of the air molecule's velocity. So this is how you calculate root mean square. You take each velocity for each molecule, you square it, you sum them all up, then you divide by the number of molecules, you take the square root. But of course you're not going to do that with gazillions of molecules, so you take the equation that makes it very simple. So now we're ready to calculate the velocity of an oxygen molecule in the air, the root mean square velocity, and we can use 3 kT over m, where little m is the molecular mass, the, uh, the molecule mass I should say, or molecular mass, and the big m is the molar mass. Since the molar mass is easier to obtain, I like this equation better. So essentially multiply k by Avogadro's number to get r and multiply the mass of a single molecule times Avogadro's number to get the mass of a mole of molecules. And so what we're going to do then is simply use that equation to find the r mass velocity of an oxygen molecule. Once you have the equation, your physics is done. Now you just plug in the numbers to crank through the algebra. Three, one, five. The temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. That would be 298 Kelvin divided by the mass. So oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so that'll be 32 grams or 0.032 kilograms. And then we need a calculator. 482 meters per second. So that's the RMS velocity of an oxygen molecule. So there you have it. That is how you calculate the RMS velocity, the effective velocity of an oxygen molecule, which means that some, of course, will travel faster, some will travel slower, but the effective velocity, you can look at a gas of, mole of oxygen molecules at that particular temperature, and that would be the effective velocity of any one of the molecules in the gas. Some will contribute more to the kinetic energy, some will contribute less, but if you take this velocity, that would be the, well, the kinetic energy of the whole gas can be found by taking the kinetic energy of an RMS molecule, so to speak, or the velocity of an R, of the RMS velocity of a molecule, and simply multiply times the number of molecules. And that is how it's done.